I think I have 45 <coughs> or 50 minutes to talk to you about money. This is simply ridiculous. You know, it's impossible. Therefore, uh, but on the other hand, you know already something about money. You know, even sometimes very disagreeable experiences with uh, not uh, sufficient quantities of money. And as we mentioned quantities, we approach already the, one of the problems, perhaps the most important problem from the practical point of view, the problem of the quantity of the supply of money. We are talking in economics about the supply, supply of new useful things, supply of useful people and so on. And then we are talking about the supply of money. But the supply of money is something very different from the supply of other things, you know. The supply of shoes, the more shoes are available in a country, the smaller is the number of people who must do without shoes. And it's the same with most of the other useful things. But with money, it is something a little bit different. It's not true that the supply of money is something uh, which you have to deal with as the supply of other things. The supply of money can be in, seen from the point of view of the whole economic system. It can be too large. Uh, while the individual and the whole society are in perfect agreement with regard to the supply of most other things, the problem of supply is not so simple as that when we are dealing with money. <coughs> you hear uh, uh, every uh, time I see somewhere printed the word, the supply of money, I have an uneasy feeling. Because increasing the supply of money in the economic system the total supply of money is something quite different from increasing <coughs> the supply of commodities. The, uh, uh, therefore, those uh, uh, books and lectures in which one talks about the supply of money and in which people are uh, uh, discussing the problem whether the annual supply of money should be increased by 3% or 5% or some other percentage, uh, these uh, discussions are misleading. They are misleading because they are uh, leading directly to one of the most critical problems, to the problem of inflation. What does it mean, inflation? <coughs> uh, we uh, 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 know that most of the useful things, most of the useful commodities are not available in quantities which would make it possible for everybody to uh, uh, enjoy as much of them as he wants. And we know that it is a very, uh, a very uh, uh, beneficial thing to be a man who increases the quantity, the supply of useful things, whether these are shoes or books or something else, it is always better that the supply should be increased than that the supply, the supply should be decreased. But with money, <coughs> there is something different. Uh, as we have to 
uh, we have today a state of affairs in which uh, the governments are in a position to increase the supply of money. And they are doing it. Because this increasing of the supply of money on the part of one institution, group, or factor, while all other factors must uh, be satisfied with the money which they are getting on the market, because this uh, increase brings about certain problems. Let us say the problem of inflation. I could uh, try to uh, uh, deal with the problem from a right general standpoint, beginning with the most simple things and proceeding step by step to uh, met to a system that uh, implies all the essential things. But this would not be a job for, I think, 45 minutes, I don't know, perhaps there are 48 minutes. Therefore, I want to start with the most uh, important, practically most important problem, the problem of inflation. As conditions are, as we have it today in most of the countries of the world, almost in all countries of the world, the governments are in a position to increase the quantity of money and they are making use of this power. Uh, the government, let us say, wants to spend more for something than it collects in taxes. People don't pay taxes with great enthusiasm, and the government doesn't like a nation that has little enthusiasm for the activities of the government. And therefore, the governments want to find a method of spending which uh, does not burden the individuals. <clears throat> the governments want to appear as institutions that are giving, while in fact they cannot give if they had not first taken away and taking, taking away by taxes is not very popular. And therefore the governments are increasing the quantity of money. Let us say, let us take the following situation, the typical situation. The government wants to spend more than it did spend up to yesterday. But it doesn't want to tax more, or it simply cannot, by political reasons, it cannot tax more. It cannot, uh, it cannot also uh, uh, borrow the money, because the conditions under which such a borrowing could take place are considered from the point of view as unsatisfactory. But then the government does something which is familiar to everybody. The government increases the quantity of money. This is a very cheap prospectus in the world in which uh, paper money is legal tender. <coughs> The governments, and uh, 
writers for the government make fun of the fact that the world, that the nations of the world consider world as money. Uh, and uh, they uh, try to uh, say a lot of things against the world standard only that they have no valid arguments against the gold standard because the gold standard works like the paper standard of the government works in a way which the government itself doesn't consider as satisfactory. Let us take the most practical case. The government wants to, wants to spend more and doesn't want to tax the people. The government wants to appear as uh, a Santa Claus. This is a very agreeable situation. It is a situation which is much more popular than the situation of a tax collector. And therefore the government does not tax the people in order to get the money for its new expenditure, but it prints it. This is very cheap, you know. Very cheap procedure. Uh, the, uh, uh, what happens now? If the government had collected the tax, the money it needs for some additional new expenditure, by uh, taxing the people, the taxpayers would have been forced to restrict their spending, their expenditure. They had, therefore, a definite quantity of money, the money which the government has taxed away, would have disappeared in the, from the hands of the people, of the citizens, and would have reappeared in the hands of the government. Uh, the people who had paid the taxes had been forced to restrict their expenditure and the government has expanded its expenditure. Uh, it is not uh, uh, to be expected that the uh, uh, commodities which the government would have, uh, uh, which the government wants to distribute directly or indirectly are the same which the citizens would have uh, spent and therefore there uh, uh, appear some problems which we cannot deal with because we have only 45 minutes. But what we have to realize is this. If the government taxes the people and the people are, restricted, are forced to restrict their expenditure, then the prices of certain commodities and services are necessarily dropping because there is a smaller demand for them than was before. On the other hand, the government appears now on the market with the money collected and the prices of those commodities and services which the government wants to buy and buys in order to spend certain things are going up. By and large, the average prices do not change. This is only uh, uh, um, approximate, approximate statement, but for our purposes it is sufficient. Therefore, the purchasing power of the monetary unit by and large remains the same. But if the government prints the additional money, 
The situation is quite different. This is the situation which people have in mind when they are, they are speaking about inflation. The government appears on the market with a newly created quantity of money, created specially for this purpose, to buy. And the quantity of commodities and services didn't change. Therefore, the result of this government printing of additional money and spending this money on the market means a tendency for prices to go up. Prices go up. <coughs> uh, and there is a different situation now. If the government had taxed the people, the taxpayers would have been forced to restrict their buying on the market. But they, they are not forced to restrict their buying on the market immediately now because the government didn't take away, uh, away the money. And so we have now, on the one hand, Higher prices paid by those people whom the government, to whom the government gave the money. Let us assume that these are government employees. Certain government employees who do not discuss the problem <coughs> whether it was necessary or not necessary to improve their situation. This is quite a different thing. But the fact is that these government employees or people who are getting money from the government for some other reasons, that these people are now in a position to pay more, to offer higher prices on the market. And there is nobody on the market who is forced to restrict this expenditure and whose, and whose uh, behavior brings about a drop in prices, and then this drop would be compensated by the opposite tendency emanating from the higher pay of the government. And this is the situation of inflation. And this is all the wisdom of the governments. I can't say in all the periods of history, but in the period of history in which we are living. Uh, this is inflation. This is precisely this inf inflation. This is a war. Uh, 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 newly created when these things appeared on the market. You know. the, uh, there is, from the point of view, of government finance and public finance and general finance, there is no possibility to avoid a tendency toward higher prices when the quantity of money is increased. It could only be avoided if this increasing of the quantity of money uh, were compensated by something else. Uh, for instance, in the 19th century, uh, there happened several times. Uh, happened several times that, with uh, uh, improvement of geographical knowledge and with the increase in traveling, that people discovered new sources of uh, gold production. The gold production increased. And, uh, for instance, uh, in the <coughs> middle of the 19th century, there was such an increase once uh, in uh, California, and there was at another time not uh, such an increase in Australia, for a definite period, a new quantity of gold above 
the regular yearly increase in the production of world was flowing into the market. And this brought about higher prices. This was, if you want to call it an inflation, uh, we'll use another term in order not to, uh, to confuse the things, but it brought about similar uh, effects. That means the people who uh, were happy enough uh, to be the first arrivals in California and found their uh, uh, gold quantities, these people were appearing on the market with additional gold, new gold, and this gold brought, and they bought many things and in a very short time. Some places in California who had been uh, simply <coughs> in the uncultivated zone became uh, 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 equipped with many things which in the West were known before. The people in these countries, in these districts of Australia and California had at that time a similar experience similar to the conditions of an inflation. But this was a limited uh, problem. It was limited because the quantities, the additional quantities, were, not, were uh, uh, very soon integrated into the whole system of monetary problems and there were no further increases in the quantity of money. But this is different if the increase in money is simply an effect of the printing on the part of the government. The government prints. The government may declare never again. But who is the government? In the best case, it's the present chief of the government. And tomorrow, we will perhaps be another man. The or the same man will say, I said this under different conditions. Conditions have changed. It, it seems now to be necessary to increase the quantity of money. Why? Because next month there are elections. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, such, in, in this way, one must say, some people tell us how silly to take this yellow metal as money and so on. You know. Why are you in favor of the gold standard, they say? My answer is because you who are asking this question, that you can, because you can print money, but you cannot create gold. And this is the answer. The answer is the gold standard is, 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 is an accident, an, uh, a geological accident, I would say. That there is uh, such a limited quantity only available that we can deal with it as much. Perhaps, I don't know it, nobody knows it, perhaps one day, people will discover a method of producing gold out of nothing, mm -hmm. or out of not gold, that is. <laughs> then, if this will happen, the people who will live at that time will have a problem to the <laughs> But we, today, have another problem. Our problem is not to increase the quantity of money, not to make inflation. You know, inflation, this is like all, I don't want to say that inflation is a vice, I don't take these, uh, 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 these methods of talking serious and so on, but seriously there is one thing with inflation. You cannot tell today 
later or not, tomorrow or today after tomorrow, people in the government will not be prepared to inflate for some reasons. They will have some excuse. They will say, inflation is bad, never should be any uh, question of inflation. And then they say, yes, but we didn't take into account the conditions of an important war. Really, this is, they didn't take this in. And then they are increasing the quantity of money. And then it happened again and again in the history that <coughs> inflation was continued up to the point in which the purchasing power of the monetary unit reached the zero point. It is not, uh, the, the, uh, this has nothing to do with the uh, problem of the cause for which people did the inflation. And let us now talk about historical problems. When the, uh, it happened again and again in the history of mankind, in the last 200 years, not in the earlier times, is that people uh, uh, went inflating, that means in print, in modern, in modern methods of inflation, that means in printing paper money, so far that they finally reach the zero point. Uh, this happened, for instance, with the so-called continental currency in the war of the American Revolution uh, in 1781 and so on. And it was a very disagreeable experience for some people, but don't forget, at that time, at the end of the 18th century, the people of America, the colonists of America, the colonists of the North American colonies that revolted against England, were an agricultural people. More or less everybody was connected with agriculture. And he didn't buy the food, he didn't buy other things, the food, this is something that is, you go, you ask to your wife, where is our food? This way help you. Mm -hmm. But it is not a problem of going to the market. And therefore, the impression which this thing left, and the whole problem was of minor importance only for the Americans of the, uh, at the end of the, of the Revolutionary War. I mention it only in order that, uh, you, because I assume that you are very well familiar with this, with the financial history of the uh, American Revolution. But it happened again and again in other countries, later and later, at a time when everybody, uh, more or less, depend, was living in the uh, money economy. <coughs> and you should not believe that this is, that the whole thing is inflationary. This is a, a vice of our ages, you know. There is, there is a, a, a very bad general tendency to uh, of historians or pseudo historians to ascribe all virtues to the past generations and all vices to those living today. Uh, I would uh, uh, I would uh, be very uh, unhappy if you were to us believe that what I wanted to say is that all ages were very virtuous, but only since the invention of the printing press, <laughs> uh, they uh, developed the paper money. 
There were already inflationists in the ages long, long before the printing press. I can't give you all uh, uh, historical examples. Uh, I want uh, only to uh, uh, advise you if you want to study this problem. Uh, there are in many important cities, also in the United States, but still more naturally in Europe, there are historical museums in which you find the coins of the past collected and uh, you can look at these coins from various points of view. Mostly people look at it from the point of view of aesthetics, but you could also look at it from the point of view of the history of, not of coins, but of money. And then you will discover that, for instance, in the second uh, uh, century after Christ, the Roman emperors were already very efficient in making inflation. Only, imagine, inflation of a very different kind which was not called inflation, even that the name came out, uh, developed only later, uh, they didn't have the printing press. And uh, uh, people uh, uh, in general believe that uh, most of the vices of mankind developed o uh, only with the uh, uh, development of modern methods of production. Now, uh, the printing press is certainly a modern method, but the uh, uh, methods of using money for such purposes as the inflationists of our days are using it was already known and practiced by the Roman emperors of the second century after Christ, only that they had other methods. They had to uh, they had only uh, hard money, silver coins. And their method was, their, they, there was no question of printing. The question was of admixing a little bit copper to the silver and to add and more and more. And under the assumption that the people, that the masses, that the people will be stupid enough not to see it. At the beginning, really they didn't see it. But more and more, and then the governments became more aggressive, let us say, and they took more and more uh, copper. And the colors changed, you know, when you add copper to silver, there's a tendency for the color to change a little bit. And uh, this is some, this is, was too much even for the people. And you had this, uh, uh, this story of uh, uh, dealing with uh, silver coins uh, and uh, uh, admixing copper, you had this as, the, as a method of government finance even in the modern ages, uh, before uh, the development of the printing press uh, in the field of the production of money. What I want to say is, and this is, I uh, think it must be known by everybody is this. Increasing the quantity of money is not the same as increasing the quantity of other things. Therefore, to use the term supply of money is already very dangerous. Very dangerous. Because you have a lot of people who consider themselves as specialists in monetary problems who are using this term supply of money and say the supply of other things increases, why should not the supply of money increase too? 
And there is one, one specialist says every year 2%. Another specialist says every year 3%. It, there is no limit to such uh, uh, progress. And really we have, uh, we have uh, uh, professors who are discussing should the in yearly increase of money be 2% or 3% or 5% or what else. If the money is made by mortal men who have the great uh, facility of a printing press, then this is a very dangerous uh, way of doing, uh, of uh, formulating the problems. <coughs> Every kind of uh, question dealing with the problem of the supply of money can be answered and is answered from the point of view of, from the personal point of view of the people who have to answer it. If people have debts, then they are in favor of what has been called a light monetary unit. If people uh, are expecting that the additional quantities of money which they are, the creation of which they are suggesting will first come to the group of people to which they are belonging then they are party in this problem. Uh, we cannot, uh, it is absolutely out of question to leave the decision whether uh, the quantity of money should be increased by 1% or by 1000% to leave this to the uh, people or to the government or to any specialists and so on. What this means has been again and again demonstrated by history. There were periods, there were, if you look at the history of the last 50 years, you will find that in, mo that in almost all countries of the world, inflation went far beyond the uh, proposals and ideas even of the most radical uh, protagonists of inflation. If we want to if we want to have money it must be something that cannot be increased with a profit by anybody with a government or citizen and so on. And the worst uh, faking of money, the worst, uh, the worst uh, things that were done to money were not done by criminals, but it was, was done by governments which by and large very often could be considered as ignoramuses but not as criminals, you know. Uh, we had in the, uh, uh, the people who uh, were living in the period of between 1900 uh, uh, let us say 1920 and 1950 had a dozen times this experience in various countries of the world. Uh, people will say, oh, this all may be uh, 
this may be uh, the effect of bad monetary policies, but we are in favor of good monetary policies. Uh, the uh, problem is not what a man who has no power and no influence and no possibility to increase the quantity of money or to derive any advantage for the, from the increase of money may say. These people don't count. Uh, this is a pure theory, if you, uh, a very abstract theory, if you say, if I were the head of the government, I would only increase every year the quantity of money by X percent. Not more. Only X percent. And I would say 3 percent and not more. And what will you say if the uh, people elected will add 1 percent today and the second percent tomorrow and so on? Practically, we cannot have a system of money in which the decision is left to the people who derive